Hey guys, this is Nia and today I will be showing you how to paint poinsettias. These flowers are probably the most Christmassy flowers and they're so easy to paint. As long as you can paint leaves, you'll be able to paint these. So let's begin by drawing them out first. So the only basic shape that you will need to know for this flower is just a leaf shape with a midrib and veins. And you will have to be able to draw the details afterwards when you paint. With this shape in mind, now we're going to group them in fives, so it's like a star. If it's a bit hard for you to draw them in groups of fives straight away, then you can draw lines first to position the leaf shapes. Then after you get the hang of it, try to draw it out without the lines guiding you because you will need to be able to do that when you paint it freehand. However, if you decide to draw it before painting, you can also do that and it's probably a bit easier if you're still new to watercolors and you're still uncomfortable with holding the brush. These flowers basically grow on top of each other, so I like to actually add another layer or two under it for extra volume. And for the second layer behind the first one, I like to draw the leaf shape in between each of the petals that you previously drew out for the first layer, so there's still five petals. And for the third and final layer, don't draw in between the two layers because you'll end up with too many of them. So I just doubled the first layer, but to make the flower look natural and the third layer to not look like it's an outline instead, I like to actually draw it slightly tilting to the side so not all of the petals look exactly in the same position. Here's a larger version so you can see what I mean by positioning it slightly tilting to the side and not making it look like an outline. The leaves are basically the same thing as the flower. The thing is the flower itself is basically made out of leaves but they turn this really nice deep red color at the top so they look like flowers. So I'm just going to draw the exact same leaf shape as the petals, but I'm just going to place them a bit randomly around the flower so it looks a little bit more dynamic. And for the center of the flower, I'm also going to add small circles, preferably around five to six small circles. And for extra elements, I'm also going to add some pine leaves and also some red berries, just like the ones from the previous video. You can also choose from any of them that I painted before, but I'm just going to choose one of them. Next, I'm going to list the colors that I'll be using for this painting. For the flower, I'm going to use three different types of reds. So I'm going to use Crimson Lake, Vermilion, and Napful Red. I'm also going to use Ultramarine Deep to darken any parts of the flower that I want to layer under and I'm also going to use that for the leaves along with sap green and permanent yellow deep. I'm going to just paint one big flower for this but you can group them too if you would like to and because I'm only going to paint one flower I'm going to paint quite a large one so I'm using this big brush right here but adjust the brush size according to the size that you're going to paint. I'm going to paint the base color of the top layer first and for this I'm mixing vermilion and naphthal red together and I'm going to use a medium to light consistency of this color to paint the leaf shape. Before putting the paint down on paper though, I also like to think about the position and because I'm only going to paint one, I'm trying to center it as best as I can. Painting the leaf shapes, I'm using the pressure of my brush to cover more area, so I use the tip of my brush to face either the center or the tip of the leaf shapes, then put a little bit of pressure as I get towards the middle, then take off the pressure again as I get to the other side of the leaf. If you're not used to twisting your wrist to get into certain positions, you can also rotate the paper so it's a bit easier for you to just do the strokes. I'm also leaving out a small space in between each of the petals just in case the water will run and make the area look too thick. But once I'm done placing all the petals and most of the paint is not puddling anymore, I'm going to pull the center a little bit so the tip just touches each other slightly. Next, I'm going to use Naphthal Red by itself and I'm using a medium consistency of this to paint the next layer down. And I'm placing the leaf shapes in between the top layer. To do that, I'm also going to try my best to avoid touching the top layer because they're not completely dry yet. But if you're patient or you have a hair dryer on hand, you can go ahead and dry the top layer before painting this next one to make it a little bit easier.
Now I'm going to mix in some Crimson Lake with the excess Nafla Red that I still have on my palette to get a slightly darker red tone and I'm going to use this mix to paint the third layer that is going to be slightly hidden behind the top layer. As you can probably tell, this is why I made the first layer lighter than the rest so the darker red tone can actually accentuate the light red in the middle. Here I'm adding a touch of Ultramarine Deep to the previous mix that's already on my palette and I'm going to use this to paint the center of the second layer where the flower is hidden in between the first layer. And I'm going to use this to darken that area and create a little bit of contrast to break the heaviness of that part of the flower. Because the paint has already dried underneath, I clean my brush and I use water to blend the wet paint into the base layer. I'm going to move on to the leaves now and for this I'm going to mix ultramarine deep and sap green together to create a dark green. Then next to it I'm going to just place permanent yellow deep by itself so I can change up the ratio and create different tones of greens. For the leaves I'm just going to paint them like how I painted the flowers and distribute them around. I'm still leaving out some spaces though so I can add the additional elements later on. At this point, this painting might look a little bit flat, but we will add on the details after this because I just want to place down the main elements first and work on the details together. Moving along to the details of the leaves and petals now, I'm basically going to layer on the spine and the veins of the leaf, but to create better interest, instead of just creating lines, I'm going to paint the negative spaces instead. You can try to draw them out first to understand the shapes, but basically we just want to create something like blocks that's going diagonally in the direction of the veins. I'm going to work from the top layer of the flower now and for that I'm just using the exact same color that I used for the base color but I'm just going to use a slightly thicker consistency so you'll be able to see it on top of the base color. I like to start by painting a line in the middle to map out the midrib. Then I'm going to paint the diagonal blocks leaving a small line in between each block on one side first. Then for the next side I'm going to paint them against the previous side and this time leave out the space in between the blocks next to each other as well as opposite sides of it so you have a negative space that you've left out in the area of the midrib as well as the veins. I forgot to also mention that I switched to a smaller brush to make it a little bit easier to paint the smaller shapes. Note that you don't have to make the exact same amount of veins on either side. I like to actually change it up a bit and find that this actually makes the painting look a little bit more loose. Sometimes I like to not also leave such a distinct midrib or make one side of the petal a bit darker than the other side too. You can find different ways to change it up slightly and this will actually make the flower look more natural. And as you can tell, I like to rotate the paper a lot so I can get better control. You can use your left hand to rotate while painting with your right hand. Thank you. 
For the next layer down, because the color of the red is actually quite vibrant and because I added the ultramarine deep, I'm going to go straight in with Crimson Lake and mix it with whatever Nephil Red I have left on my palette and paint it the same way as the top layer. As you can tell because the color that I'm using is a similar consistency but just slightly darker than the base color, the contrast between the negative shapes isn't so distinct. So if you would like to make yours more visible, you can mix it with a darker color. But I actually prefer mine to have less detail in that area so the top layer becomes the focal point. For the last layer of the petals, I mix a tiny bit of ultramarine deep just to darken the crimson lake mixture by a touch, but don't add too much that the flower will start to turn purple. And I'm just going to paint this the same way as I painted the other layers. As I move further to the back petals though, I become more loose with my strokes and even if the colors are not too distinct, by painting using those strokes you can still create a very subtle texture. Here I'm increasing the contrast between the top petal and the one in between by adding a little bit more ultramarine deep with the crimson lake. And in some areas of the petals, if I feel like I can bump up the texture slightly, I use a thinner consistency of the same mixture to add more of the negative shapes of the veins. Then I went back to the top petals again and I used a mixture of vermilion and naphtha red in a medium consistency to paint the midrib very lightly so you can still see the area of the negative space as well as the line that I just painted. For the leaves, I'm going to add the exact same texture as the flower but this time I'm using the green mixture and like before, I like to change up the ratio of the hues to create different tones. For the pine leaves, I'm going to use the same colors as I did in the previous video. So I'm going to mix in some burnt sienna into the green mixture from before. And I'm also going to add more of the sap green and ultramarine deep next to it. Just so I have those two mixtures to go back to when I need to reload my brush. For this, I'm using my smallest brush. But if you can control a bigger brush, you can also stick with that. I like to paint the stem of the spine using the burnt sienna mixed with some green mixture and for the leaves itself, I'm going to draw out wispy lines using the dark green mixture and fill in the spaces that I feel look a little bit empty. You don't have to make the spine a different color, you can also stick with just the green if you would like to. We're going to move on to the center of the flower now, which I forgot to mention in the beginning, but for this I'm going to use yellow gouache instead of the watercolor because I need something that's a little bit more opaque and I'm going to add white with yellow to increase the opacity even more. So none of the red will show through from the flower petals. Then I'm going to take a very thick consistency of the yellow and paint some small circles or dots in the middle of the flower. At the moment, because the color is very light, the yellow won't be too visible, but for now I'm just going to wait for this to dry and we can add more colors later on. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and paint some tiny circles for the berries around and on top of the pine leaves, and for that I mixed in Nafil Red with Crimson Lake to create a deep red color. So 
So after I finish painting the berries, I make sure that the yellow is now completely dry. Then I mix some ultramarine deep with crimson lake to create a really dark burgundy color. And I used my small brush to paint this color around the yellow circles. And the burgundy color will make the yellow pop. So the flower is basically done now, but I'm going to turn this into a Christmas card and I wrote Merry Christmas with pencil first to make sure that I like the position. Then I just outline it with my art liner afterwards. After that, I waited a few seconds for the art liner to completely dry and I erased the pencil. Then I tried to thicken some of the strokes too so the writing is a bit more visible. And that's basically it. This is the finished flower and card. After I filmed this, I also decided to add a little bit of gold leaf at the tip of the flower petals. And I apply it just by using PVA glue like how I did it in the previous video. Next week, I'm going to make another Christmas card which has a poinsettia wreath. So if you're interested, don't forget to join me in the next video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!